Explain like I'm five, explain like I'm five. Are people too selfish for socialism? Daddy, Timmy at school said that socialism can never work because everybody is selfish. Why, that's interesting. So he means socialism is against human nature? Well kids, let's go visit the first human beings on our planet. A long time ago, all humans lived in tribes. Like the Native Americans. Yes, exactly. A tribe is like a very big family, all living together. They didn't have cars or televisions or iPads. They lived in nature. And nature, they said, she did not belong to any single person. She belonged to either no one or to the entire tribe. They were hunter-gatherers. This means they would pick fruit from trees and bushes, dig up roots, catch fish and wild animals. And the lands and forests and lakes, all the things they needed to survive, were commonly owned. So everybody would just take what they needed? Yes. But when it was my birthday and I brought homemade cookies to school, Timmy wanted them all to himself. Ah yes, good point. That could happen in a tribe too. Suppose someone wanted to own all the trees and have all the apples for himself. That would really suck for the rest of the tribe. They would have no apples at all. And the selfish person, he couldn't even eat all those apples all by himself without getting sick. So what would happen if someone tried to claim the common resources of the tribe? They would just not put up with it. Like they could simply ban someone from the tribe. Then the selfish person would be on his own, all alone in nature, where there are still hungry wolves and bears and the like. People really needed to stick together to survive, or it would not end well. Cool. Ooh, gross. See, acting in your own self-interest is okay. But if you take it too far and hurt others, they will not accept it. It's a matter of balancing the needs and wants of the individual with those of the group. Like in a sports team. Exactly. A team wants every player to perform at his best. The team cares about the players. But the players should act as a team too, because a team that cooperates well is a successful team and that is good for everyone. Same for the tribe, they had to act as a team, work together, for instance if they wanted to hunt a mammoth. You kids know what a mammoth is? That doesn't look like a mammoth. It's a mammoth, okay? No, it doesn't look like a mammoth at all. Yeah, it kinda looks like a mastodon to me. Yeah, that, you know? They might look similar, but they're actually two very distinct species in the Proboscidean family. That's a taxonomical order also containing contemporary elephants, Dad. It's a mammoth, and who is explaining and who's five? Okay, now let me continue. So it's not easy to hunt a mammoth. Hunters would really need to plan and organize and put in a lot of effort to catch one of these. It's practically impossible for a hunter to do this all alone. But when they cooperated, everyone could benefit. There is evidence of certain hunter-gatherer tribes being so successful that they only needed to work 20 hours a week to sustain themselves. This leaves them a lot of time for talking, having fun, partying, making love, creating art. So everybody was nice to each other all the time? Oh no, there is also sufficient evidence of the opposite. Tribal warfare, for example, or the lack of science the point is not that selfish behavior did not exist and is against human nature. Selfish behavior is part of human nature, but so is cooperation and because we used to live in a situation where we had to cooperate and share, we did so, and quite successfully for tens of thousands of years. So that is basically why socialists think that basing our society on cooperation and common ownership is possible.